Okay, let me help some of you confused people. There's a lot of confused people speaking about His Imperial Majesty and let me help some of y'all who don't understand prophecy, who don't understand what's really going on or what really has gone on. Let me show you how His Imperial Majesty is at the cusp of fulfilling biblical prophecy and everything that Joe wasn't taught and many of these guys running around talking about their Bible scholars so forth and so on and preaching half of the truth is ignoring the other half of the truth. I'm going to go through this a little bit quick right here in this particular blog as the response to certain Satanists and even certain so-called Ethiopian, Sabian, Chaldean Satanists out there. Okay, first of all, first things first. Let's go to the deadly wound of the beast that Revelation speaks about. You know when it said that that, that, that deadly wound would be healed. You understand that we will know that prophecy now, which was sealed up from the book of Daniel, is now being unsealed. Okay? So, in 1928, we find Rastafari, Ras Teferi Mekonen, being crowned Nguz or Nguz Teferi in 1928. Then, we have in 1929, you understand, in 1929, we have Gaspari, Benito Mussolini and we have uh, who was the next fool? Let's see Gaspari Benito oh Victor King Victor Emmanuel who was the king of Italy. They signed this historic um pact and agreement and this is what restored the complete power to Rome again. You understand to the Vatican rather to the Catholic Church. It's what made the Pope not only head of a church but head of a state and if you go back to newspaper articles so forth and so on they even say in these newspaper article that the deadly wound this wound this is the healing the healing of the deadly wound now you have to go do your own research and connect this we're gonna show you a couple of the clips and everything right here you could pause it you could go on the internet so forth and so on and look this up okay this is what happens in 1929 so we have the king of kings of Ethiopia from the throne of David 1928, you understand, but as King Tafari, then 1929, do you remember what happened in 1929 too? In October of 1929 was the crash of the stock market, you understand, the which led the, to the, the depression and everything like that. Remember they say the dark day, it will be the dark day of the Lord, the dark day of God, you understand, that dark day is that evil day, that Kufu Ken, you understand, and the economic crash which led to the Great Depression. Then in 1930, we have the King of Kings upon the throne of David being crowned King of Kings, conquering line of the tribe of Judah, King of Israel. You understand? Remember the word of Yahweh is that there will never lack a man to sit upon the throne. The throne. Stop spiritualizing. There's a man to sit on the throne of great King David. You understand? So. Who left the door open? You understand? Because there was a door open now for Satan. There was a door open for the beast. You understand? To attack the king of kings in the east. But first of all, let me give you about 11 signs of prophecy in the scripture that connects the war or the fascist invasion of Ethiopia with biblical prophecy. The 11 signs of the beast. We have to identify who is the beast. And the beast is identified with fascist Italy in connection with the Pope of Rome. All right. First of all, the beast receives its seat and authority from Rome in Revelation 13 and 4. Secondly, the beast that rules the world for 1260 years from AD 538 to AD 1798. Thirdly, the beast received a deadly wound which later heals in Revelation in 13 and 3. Fourthly, the beast is both a political and a religious power which is worshipped in Revelation 13 and 4. Fifthly, the beast tampered with God's Lord in Daniel, Daniel 7 and 25. Sixthly, the beast has a leader who claims, who himself claims to be God on earth and is able to forgive sins, you understand, know which is said to be blasphemy, Revelation 13 and 1. Seventh, the beast is a mother, a mother church. 
many daughters, a demon nomination, the denominations have come out of her in Revelation 17 and 5. Eighth, and this is a very important part, which is bringing it home, which is bringing it down to the earth level. You understand, for the sheeple, hopefully to understand this and receive it, the beast made war with the saints, with the Kedusan, with the holy ones, Revelation 13 and 7. Ninth, the beast is a world power which is wondered at in Revelation 13 verses 3 and 4. Tenth, the beast has a man at the head of it with the number of his name being Chi Sti Stigma or 666, Revelation 13 and 18. Now, 11th point, and it's interesting, 11, because 11 refers to, to sin, iniquity, you understand? 11th point is, the beast has a dreaded mark, a mark, which if it received, will cause a person to be cast into the lake of fire and lose eternal life, according to Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and 10. Now, by this time, you should have already guessed that we're speaking about the so-called papacy. If you have, then that's correct because it's the only so-called power, you understand, on the face of the planet Earth that fits and fulfills all of the Holy Bible's prophetic characteristics. Now, the prophecy about the war with the saints. So once you identify papal Rome, and the Lateran Concord of 1929, the Lateran Treaty, sound like latrine, right? The Lateran Treaty of 1929 with the Pope. Next thing we have to identify is who are the saints, you understand? According to the scripture and according to prophecies, that remnant that did not go into captivity, that remnant of the Beta Israel, that remnant of the house of David, that remnant of Zion, that daughter of Zion that did not go into captivity with the other 12 tribes of Israel, with us in the West who went from East Africa, crossed the river, the river of Egypt, the river of Ethiopia into West Africa, and then the trans-Ethiopic Ocean, the trans so-called Atlantic slave trade, end up in the West. And this is why we have to deal with such so-called dumb Negroes, you know what I'm saying, such lost sheep, sheeple in this day and time. Now let's connect Psalm 2. Psalm 2 now explains it. Psalm 2 now explains the plot against God's anointed. According to Psalm 2, God, Yahweh, the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, he has an anointed king that he establishes on Mount Zion. He establishes his own king. Now many will say that's Christ, many will say that's the Messiah, and that's correct on that sense, but because they don't really have a good comprehension of scripture, you understand, they don't really recognize that when it says Christ or anointed, saying the Moshiach, the one who's anointed, kings and priests, according to Hebraic theology, are anointed. But now Psalm 2, it provides us the key right here. You understand that the kings of the earth plan now to attack this anointed king, this messiah king, this christened king, and we're speaking of Negus Tafari, the king of kings, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, and to attack the blameless Ethiopian people, that remnant from that time, remember Ethiopian that time was a holy nation, Ethiopian this time is a secular nation. So when people look at Ethiopia now, they say, well, I don't see that, so and so on. You are looking at a secular nation, you understand, which half the people at least have gone after Satan and are haters of Edomawi Haile Selassie. This is why the Psalm says right here in the Hebrew, it says, Lama, 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 Ran, Shu, Goyim. Why are the nations in an uproar? Ul umim, ul umim, lama ragshu goim, ul umim yitgu rik, yityatvu amelke eret, we rozni notsdu yichad, Allah yifuwa 
Ouais, oh là, me chiffre Lama radeshu agoima Ulumima yifugurika And why are the peoples And why are the peoples Why are the peoples In an uproar Why are the nations in the uproar now what what does this uproar signify this uproar now signifies the, the, the beginning the beginning of world war ii that began with the fascist invasion of 